Hello everybody, it's time for us to do a, a, an honor again online. I um, hope you're able to do the other ones. Um, this, this week we're going to do a not tying honor. Now, not tying honor is got to do with, with rope um, and what we can do with rope. Now, there's a lot that, um, a lot of activities a lot of uh, an industry, a lot of hobbies that require knots, right? And whether you're a fisherman, whether you're um, doing um, ship hauling, whether you're doing climbing, um, knots are always needed. And so we're going to go through uh, your knot tying honor um, today. Now, the knot tying honor has two parts to this. One is a theory, I'm going to explain to you, which you need to work on your worksheet. And then the second part is a practical one, where we're going to show you how to tie knots. And uh, um, the, the knot honor is requiring you to memorize and know from memory 20 different knots. Now, phew, don't, don't, uh, don't get too anxious. 20 knots is very, very easy because there's a lot of simple ones, some complicated ones, but mostly simple ones. And when you know how to do it, it's actually very easily. And you can, you can show your friends when you, when you get a chance, when this big virus is over, you can show your friends how, how intelligent you are in, 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 in the kind of knots that you do. And then the third part is actually a third part, because it's the theory practical and the third part, which is also practical. And on it, it's asking you to do a knot board. Now, what's a knot board? can see the picture on the screen now that's what a knot board looks like now it looks a bit complicated doesn't it but don't worry we have a different way of you doing it where you can use your mobile phone or your parents mobile phone you you do your 25 knots and you take pictures of them now I'll show you it's an example here's an example I show you what I've done I've made the knots and I've made pictures I've taken the picture of them and you put that on a collage. Um, for example, you paste all those pictures on an, you know, on an A4 sheet online computer, or two A4 sheets or whatever. Many many A4 sheets. You put it all together. Um, you know, you can print it or you can save it and then electronically show me the knots that you've done. Is that all right? Okay. So let's go with let's go with knot tying and let's go with the theory. Now there's a lot of stuff that you need to do. Um, for example, terms of knots. Now, it's important to actually define these terms because when we tie the knots, we're going to refer to these terms and you will know what, um, how it makes, um, makes sense. So the first one, the first that we can do is a, a bite. <laughs> no, I know you're hungry, but that doesn't mean a, a bite. But a bite, a B-I-G-H-T. A bite. What is a bite? A bite is basically, if you look at the rope, if you look at this rope like that, this bit is the bite. Okay, so in other words, it's the curved section of a rope. When you curve a piece of rope like that, it's, it's you, you, you bite it. Okay, so, so that's the bite. The second one is the running end of the rope. Now, what's the running end of the rope? Now, a rope has two ends, right? The two ends. Now, if you drop this one, the one you hold in your hand is the running end. Now, what do I talk about running end? The running end means it's the working one of the rope, the working end of the rope. In other words, if I'm going to make a slip knot, that's a slip knot, but you see this is my working end, so I'm, I'm making the knot from this, this end, right? So that is what is called your running end. The third part, obviously, then, you know, what is the other end? It's called the standing part. Okay, that's the one that hangs loose. Or if you think about it, somebody holds that end of the rope, that side stretches out. So you hold on to the running end. That person is not doing anything. He's just holding on to that. That's the standing end of the rope. Okay, so it's the non-working end of the rope. The, the one that you have is the running end or the working end, the end of the rope. Now... The fourth one that we can look at, um, the, the underhand loop. What is an 
underhand loop. Underhand. Now, it doesn't mean underhand, you know, when you do things underhand or you do things dodgy. No, not that. Hard. It's basically saying the underhand loop is the running end. If you take the running end and you put it underneath the standing end, like I show you, right? So this goes underneath it. Okay? So that means that's making an underhand loop. When the running end goes underneath the standing end, that becomes a underhand loop. An overhand loop, obvious. When the running end goes over the standing end, when the running end goes over the standing part, that is an overhand loop. Okay, now, what's a turn? A turn is simply, remember, that's a bite, okay? Now, a bite is a curve in. Now, when, it, when a bite becomes a turn, is that if you look at my hand, I turn it around an object, okay? Or a pole, or hand, whatever. When I put it over something, it becomes a turn. So, remember, this is a bite, right? It's just the curve end. But when it goes over an object, or a, it becomes a turn, okay? Number G, bend. A bend. Okay, when he talks about, you'll talk about, you're talking about a sheet bend or a, a carrick bend. A bend is just the another name for a knot. Okay, so whenever I make a knot, so I can say I've made a slip knot or I say I make a slip bend. All right, so that's a bend. A bend is basically, basically another word for the knot that you're actually doing, all right? Is when you tie two ropes together, knot, whatever, it is called a, a bend. The number H is what is called a hitch. A hitch. Okay, now what is a hitch? Again, here's my object. I'm going to use my arm again. Here's my object. Remember, what is this? You make a turn, right? Now a turn, now a hitch is when you actually make a knot around a piece of object. So, yeah, I've made a slip knot, or what was it called? A slip bend, right? So when I make it around an object, it becomes a hitch, okay? Now there are different, there are various hitches that you will do, various names for each, like a clove hitch and a timber hitch. Um, okay, so 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 when you take the bite, you turn it, but when you make actually a knot around the object, you've created a hitch. Okay, now two more. What is a splice? Now a splice is a very interesting one, and um, you've got to think about what it may mean, right? So when you think about splice. What it actually referred to, you, you take the P out, it actually means, you can say slice. So it sounds like slice. A splice is a slice. So what it actually says to me is that when you take a piece of rope, right, and you, you take it apart. Now, remember, if you look at this rope, you see how it's made out of different strands, right? Now, uh, when you splice a rope, you take it apart, but then you also... Um, create something in order to make the rope stronger. So think about it this way: if you make, if you, if you, if you look at your sister's hair, or if you're a girl and you look at your own hair, what do you do? Sometimes you plait it, right? You plait it. In other words, you separate your hair and then you plait it together to actually sometimes make the hair stronger or make it look nice. So a splice is basically saying, look. When the rope comes apart like this, right, you create a splice in order to make it a bit stronger. Now, there's a picture. I will show you a picture. You can't see it on here, but, but this I've just made a splice, an end splice. Um, this one is I've made a eye splice. What I've done is I have uh, opened up the rope a little bit, and what I've done is I went back and I've plaited it. So what happens is I've weaved it inside the current rope or the actual rope and we've made it actually stronger in that sense. So instead of tying a knot to it, 
I've made it, I spliced it. So, so, so in a way, what is a splice? A splice is basically uh, um, that you stop, you, you create a weave in order to stop a piece of rope from fraying, or you create a weave to make a piece of rope stronger. That's a splice, okay? So remember that. So finally, what is whipping? Now, <laughs> no, don't worry about whipping. It doesn't mean, you know, uh, um, somebody taking a piece of rope and giving you a whip. No, a piece of a whipping is actually another way, also similar to a, a splice. You'll see a picture on, I'll show you a picture. You can see a picture now as well. It basically says that um, you, you create, a, you use a smaller piece of string, you weave it inside a piece of, of, of rope, you weave it also in order to also help the, um, um, the rope from, from, from fraying or, um, 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 or falling um, apart or coming apart. So you use whipping um, in the same way, almost like a splice. Now, whipping means you take a different types of string in order to weave it. Splice means you take the actual rope and you weave it into the other type of rope. Okay, now it sounds a little bit complicated, but when you see the picture, and we're going to show you an example, um, so, show you an example of how to make a splice, um, an eye splice or a back splice, we're going to show you that, and then you'll understand what it means by, by splicing. Okay, so that's the, that's, that's one end, that's number one question finishing for you, so you can answer that, okay, and, and, and um, understand what it is. So let's recap, let's give you a test, let's give you a test and see if you, if you, if you can, you can shout it out, right? I want to hear you shout it out. Okay, so what is this called? This part of the rope? Okay, correct, right? If you said running end, then it is correct. Okay, uh, does anybody know what that is? The curved part of the rope? You want to say it? Shout out. Okay, if somebody said bite, that's exactly what you're doing. Okay, so let's have another test. If I do this around an object, what is this called? What am I doing? Shout it out. Very good. If you said turn, that's the correct word, right? So now, when I tie a knot around an object, what am I doing? What have I done? Buddy? Yes, if you said hitch, correct. All right, so you know a little bit now about what is happening and so, so, so let's go to the next part. Now, how do you care for, for rope? Now rope is, rope is like, you know, <laughs> looking after a pet, you know, because if you're going to use your rope often, you need to care for it, okay? Um, you look after rope because some rope, you will talk about it a little bit now, some rope can actually damage if you leave it lying, you know, or if you, uh, if you don't care for it. How do you care for, um, for rope? One important thing is, just like your pet, just like yourself, what you need to do, you must always keep rope clean, okay? Sometimes it gets dirty because you've done campery or you've done a, you know, tug of war. Wash it, okay? You can wash your ropes. So always keep it clean, clean or, you know, um, uh, uh, um, brush the sand off, whatever, keep it clean. The second one is always coil a rope. When you store a rope, you must always coil it. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? Let me show you. It's basically saying, uh, you know, store the rope in a way, you know, that you've rounded it. Okay, so if you're going to store it, always wrap it around something when you store um, the rope effectively. So coiling it means you, you know, you, 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 you storing the rope in a round fashion. So you can do it around, you know, a piece of pole, you can do it around, um, you know, anything that you find just to store the rope, that's it, okay? And the third one is make sure rope is dry before you store it. Okay, now there are certain ropes that are actually made from plants, okay, made from plants. And uh, just like plants or even clothes, 
are made from plants remember and you can't store clothes that are wet and and put it away you know what you know what's going to happen right it's going to come moldy and you're going to destroy it the same with rope before you store rope away in the garage or wherever you always must dry it make sure it's dry and then the fourth one is how to care for rope remember to put rope back where you found it okay return rope to its proper place after using it that's a good way of caring for rope all right in our next part we're going to talk a little bit about what's the difference between laid rope and braided rope okay now um, if you look at this rope i'm not sure if you can zoom on it um, really but i'll show you a picture this is a piece of nylon rope but this is called laid rope what happens is is that you've got you know you've got three strands here right if you see it's normally three strands now each strand has got smaller strands run the same way in terms of coiled in in maybe um, um, anti-clockwise direction so you take a smaller strand that gets coiled and then you take uh, you coil those smaller ones once you've once you've coiled them you coil them into a bigger strand and that is called um, um, a, a laid um, laid rope okay so you always you notice it if you look at the picture show you in the picture there you know um, laid rope uh, you know how what it looks like the the other one is braided rope now that's a little bit more complicated because um, there's a lot of time that gets taken into um, into braided rope now this is the rope you know that you use for decorative purposes you know if you want to use it for a flag or um, you know just for for decorating and 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 sometimes a bit of elastic as well but um, it's called braided and it's 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 like a plait now it's not just coiled together remember your 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 sister's hair or your hair you know you can't just coil your hair together it's not going to stay you've got to braid it so it's like plaiting hair and so um, 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 braided rope is when you plait a bit together then you plait it on top of it and you plait on top of it again and so it's different layers but plaited or woven together that is braided rope okay now um, the uses for braid for 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 laid rope um, laid rope not called to laid rope is much stronger than, than braided rope laid rope is made um, to withstand you know immense strain and it's very strong braided rope like i said you know it's for decorative knots um, it works well with pulleys because it, it's you know it, it, it doesn't um, uh, um, you know catch on a lot of things you know because it, it, it's very finely braided let's say then the different types of rope um, number four let's talk about the different types of rope now if you want to take a break at this stage you can so you can pause the video you know and, and, and research and write your stuff down if you want to and then come back to the video okay but i'm going to carry on so you can pause it if you want pause it now and then you come back and then we'll, we'll do it so right so let's talk about the different kinds of rope there's basically two different kinds of rope in two categories there is the natural rope and there's the synthetic rope right the natural rope is the ones made of plants remember i said some plants that you can do um, the second one is um, uh, synthetic ones which are uh, which are made from from different kinds of material let me start with the synthetic ones those are nylon rope or polypropylene rope so this is a nylon rope nylon rope made from coal or from oil for example nylon rope is made from coal and that's you know what coal is right it's mined and then they make they make the nylon so it's a synthetic material um, also made polyester rope is made of oil the natural one is what you call manila or sisal now sisal rope you can see it it looks a bit rough right it looks a little bit like frayed the edges sisal rope is the rope if you 
Um, if you go into B&Q or in some of the shops, you know that some of the mats, even the outside mats or the inside ones, the ones that people use, you come into the door, you know, and you wipe your feet so that, the, so that you know, that you don't trample wet, uh, you know, or dirt into your mom's house, into your house. Um, you know that kind of brand, that sisal, and they make rope out of that. Now, sisal um, is used a lot, especially for boats, things like that, because it's very strong. But it's a natural rope. It's made out of plants. And sisal is made from the, um, it says here, the natural fiber of a green plant called the agave sisalana cactus in Mexico. There's a picture. You can see a picture of that as well. Um, so it's, 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 it looks, you know, like a cactus plant. And they take that, they somehow remove the fibers or they take the fibers of the plant and then they make sisal um, out of that. And it's very brown, it's very strong. When I remember when I said about caring for a rope, it's very important with nylon rope, you know, um, 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 it doesn't absorb, absorb water that much. It actually propels water, whereas sisal absorbs water. And therefore to store sisal, for example, you have to be sure that you dry it in order to make sure that you look after it. Sisal rope, you've got to look after it a little bit better, or the natural rope, a little bit better, whereas the nylon ones, you know, can be, got to clean it, but um, it lasts, you know, it lasts longer. Nylon rope um, has got disadvantages, you know, it's more slippery. That's why sisal rope is used for boats, because it doesn't slip that much, because when it grips, it grips. Now, uh, nylon rope is a bit more slippery. Nylon rope, you've got to be careful not to be close to heat because it will melt. And when that melting happens, it can burn you. So you've got to be very careful. Um, but, um, you know, and uh, nylon rope stretches a lot. They say it stretches um, um, more than um, natural, natural rope. But like I said, nylon rope is rot resistant. Where sizal rope rots easily if you don't look after it. It's also lighter to carry one. Sisal rope is very, very heavy. Um, um, if you ever try to pick up a big sisal rope in a boat, you know, outside a boat, boating yard, you'll find it's very difficult. Okay, right. We're going to pause there and then, you know, and um, I'm going to show you a video where we talk about the next part, splicing, okay? Now, splicing um, is a very interesting one. So now you're going to show you, you're going to see um, the three videos, or you can, you can actually, it, the, the link will be on the page below this video. Go and watch it before you continue the next video. The person that recorded it talks about different kinds of splicing. So you'll see a back splice, you'll see an eye splice, and you'll see just the usual splice of you know, of weaving two ropes together. Okay, very interesting. Go and watch that and uh, we'll come back and continue with the practical bits of tying actual knots together. Mm -hmm.